Hello, beautiful people. It's Scent Gourmand here with another review from my cherished perfume collection. This is a blind buy from the resale market, but an almost new purchase from Diptyque, which is a brand that I love for its candles for the most part, but also its spellbinding perfumes, of which this, sadly, uh, is not one of my favorite, it turns out. This is Orpheum, a release from Givaudin perfumer Olivier Pacheux that came out in 2021. He's done a lot of great things for Diptyque already, including El Capital, uh, what is it, 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain, Tempo, and Vetiverio, I believe. The name of this fragrance is inspired by Paris in the early 1960s, the Saint-Germain Quarter was alive with the rhythm of all-night sessions of jazz clubs and artistic encounters, and Orpheum was one of those bars there, filled with people discussing the world, dancing and laughing in a warm, vibrant, and elegant atmosphere. The three founders of the nearby Diptyque Boutique like to meet there, apparently. So you might think that this fragrance would be a boozy, sexy, effervescent, tobacco-y sort of thing, but the smell of this one got me thinking that perhaps it was more of a healthier daytime lunch meeting they had going on there at L'Orphion. It doesn't match my first impression of what I think it should be. I say that because, yeah, this fragrance is clean, it's fresh, it's earthy, it's very subtle. So subtle, in fact, that it barely jumps from the skin. And when it does, I detect a slight spicy paper quality with a touch of something sweet. This fragrance is a tribute to a creative friendship, and friendship is something I associate more with daytime and cleanliness rather than, you know, deep, sultry evenings. It's got a very simple composition. Here are the notes. Diptyque claims you get a warmth from the tonka, a sort of depth from the cedar, a richness from the jasmine, and a liveliness from the juniper. Agreed, it's a, a well-rounded, uh, yeah, very different fragrance. Though I'd say the juniper note in here is faintly screaming at, in there at times. If you speak French, uh, Diptyque has created a 3D exploration website for the fragrance, emulating the old L'Orphion. Ouvrez la porte, vous êtes à L'Orphion. Pour célébrer ses 60 ans, Diptyque réouvre les portes. Okay, I'll, I'll translate. Open the door, you're at the Orpheon. To celebrate its 60th anniversary, Diptyque reopens its doors of a legendary bar in the Saint-Germain district. The house invites you into the atmosphere of the buzzing artistic Paris of the early 1960s and invites your senses and imagination to step back in time. The website plays some jazz music here, but uh, you won't hear that here because theirs is unlikely YouTube friendly, if you know what I mean. So let's explore this site together in case there isn't an English version. Unlikely, but what the heck. <laughs> if my voice changes here, it's because I've decided to voice over using a different device. Orphean was born of a creative encounter, just like Diptyque 60 years ago. The house was founded by a cosmopolitan trio of multi-talented friends, Desmond Knoxleet, Yves Cousselin, and Christiane Gautreau. I hope I'm not killing their names. At the time, uh, such artistic friendships were part of the zeitgeist. Today, they're the very essence of Diptyque. Point number two the creative energy of a night bar, or nightclub. It was here, as neighbors, that the founders of the house and their friends met in the bubbling atmosphere of this night bar. In 1960s Paris, the artists lived to the rhythm of all-nighters and meetings. People danced, laughed, and remade the world until dawn. Friendships were forged, and artistic projects were born, like De Peak. Okay, so perhaps they did meet up at night and not during the day, as I'd thought. Point number three, a souvenir from Orphean. The Orphean may have closed its doors, but that doesn't mean it's gone, at least not completely. The long stroboscopic blue column in the middle of the store at 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain is a colorful vestige. It saw a lot of people in those years, 
jasmine sounding the rhythm in their brass, philosophers theorizing on the zeitgeist, young girls and ballerinas dancing in the fog, dandy smokers that were often flirtatious. Point number four, creation begins with an encounter. That it does. The original musical composition Orphean is a jazz bossa nova interpretation of the olfactory notes of Diptyque's new Eau de Parfum, born of the encounter between perfumer Olivier Pecheur, Orphean's nose, and Louis Hoffman, a talented young French musician and composer. Yeah, if this is the background music that plays on this site, I like it. Point number five, inspired illustrations. A tale of origins, the genesis of a friendship, the epic of a creation. At Diptyque, there are so many stories to be told through illustrations. For Orphean, uh, artist Gian Paolo Pagni has interpreted the um, festive atmosphere of this nightclub in the Saint-Germain district in the 1960s. The front side of the bottle displays a nod to the fabric patterns created by Diptyque, the house's primary location, and the iconic oval is multiplied by rays of light reflecting the festive spirit of the place. On the opposite side of the bottle, there's a rereading of an historic motif from the house archives with three different profiles. We can see the original artistic collective with the trio represented by Christiane, Desmond, and Yves. We can also read a three-beat score, uh, the triptych that has been the spirit of Diptyque for 60 years. The house, the perfumer, the illustrator. Point number six, smell. Like an olfactory portrait, Orphean uh, immerses you in the atmosphere of this emblematic Parisian landmark of the 60s. The comfort of patinated woods, the fumes of alcohol, the powdery, musky trail of artists and their muses. It's all there in a luminous, floral, woody scent. It's the magic of a composition combining the warmth of tonka bean, the depth of cedar, the richness of jasmine, and the vivacity of juniper berries. Okay, full disclosure, proficiency in another language does not mean you can translate. My French is passable, depending on who you talk to, but translation skills are a whole different level. So I called upon my friend, Deep L, when editing this video. It's a trusted tool I use for work, but for Japanese, of course. I'll link it below if you're interested. It's kind of like an alternative to Google Translate. So Diptyque has milked its heritage big time for this release which was a very intelligent thing to do because we humans love stories, don't we? I think one of the reasons luxury brands with long histories perform so well in the marketplace is the fact that they take advantage of these stories from their own histories and embed them in their campaigns like this. It's very effective. It's a powerful way to get consumers to bond with the brand. And I have to admit that little digital vignette I shared, especially with the music, uh, I'll link the site below so you can hear the music. Uh, it's made me appreciate this fragrance even more. Uh, though at first, of course, I did feel they are disjointed a bit, still do to a certain extent. So Orphean, it's a powdery, inviting, woodsy, and indeed it's very original, very different from a lot of stuff I've sniffed before. It's daytime signature scent worthy and very inoffensive, uh, even if some do find it a little bit kitchen detergent-like. It, it's a quiet fragrance. Uh, I do find it linear for the most part, but I think that's a good thing. There is some sharpness in the juniper at the front, but that does calm down to give way for the sweeter, but not very sweet, jasmine to step out. It stays more tart than sweet for the most part, which in the popular landscape of louder, much sweeter fragrances, provides a pleasant respite. After sniffing this for about 30 seconds in, you might detect a smoke and cigarette smell, very faint, very, very faint, which kind of reminds me of um, like a jasmine and cigarette thing. Oh, what's that scent from um, Etat Libre d'Orange? Uh, jasmine et cigarette. It doesn't smell like that at all, but just reminds me of it in a way. This cigarette reference makes much more sense to me because now I can imagine like a bar at night, you know, with uh, <laughs> plumes of tobacco smoke on a table of burnished wood with paper art and cocktails, gin, like gin tonic, juniper berries, um, like playing cards. 
what else is on that table? Maybe some makeup or something. It's got that vibe to it, I guess, a little bit. But at first, you know, before I reference the historical stuff on the website, I was underwhelmed by this. Not that it doesn't smell unappealing, not at all. It's, it's, it smells great. And it does smell very unique, I'd say. But simply, it falls short of my expectations of what I feel an EDP fragrance should be. It's not beastly enough. I, when I pay a lot of money for a fragrance, which actually I did for this one, I got it secondhand. But if I do, I want it to last longer. And this is just too much of a skin scent. It also has, um, it has some nice resinous notes, which I, I don't think were listed up there. If you're like me, after wearing this highly inspired perfume for just a few hours, all that will remain is a pleasant, peppery, sweet waft of woody air, laundry, yeah, there is a soapy note here for sure, laundry soap bubbles, and um, you know, it's not very luxe in my opinion, that facet of it anyway. And that smell that you do smell after a few hours is only gonna be available to you or anybody else who's lucky to come close enough to your skin to smell you. And that's, uh, that's all there is. Scent Gourmand uh, signing out. Smell you later. Mm -hmm.